create our background. You'll need to gather together fabric scraps, your ironing supplies including an ironing pad or ironing board, and your iron, some cotton batting, a pair of scissors, and fusible webbing. Lay out your piece of batting and cut a piece of fusible webbing to be the same size as your batting or slightly smaller. Fuse the fusible webbing to the batting. Be sure to use a cotton setting with no steam. I usually start in the center of the fusible webbing and work my way out to each edge. You want to be sure to get all of the edges to ensure that it's stuck down. You can set your iron aside and we're going to remove the release paper from the fusible webbing. The easiest way to do this is to score the release paper with a straight pen or a safety pen and then pull the paper along the score line. It's going to take a little bit to get it started and it may come off in big chunks or little chunks but keep going until you've removed all of the release paper. If you try to do it from the edge without scoring, it's much more time consuming and difficult to get it started. Once the release paper is removed, your batting is ready for you to begin making your background. Alright, you're going to start to arrange your fabric scraps to create a background for your quilt. You're going to basically make a collage. And collaging is pretty much all about whatever you think looks good. So, the choices that I've made for my quilt may not be the same choices you would make for your quilt. As you can see, I sort of settled on what I wanted on the bottom third or bottom quarter of the quilt, which is what I consider basically the horizontal space of the quilt or the floor of the quilt. And then from there I begin to work up trying to determine what I would like to have in the vertical space or the wall on the quilt. And I changed my mind a few times, I'm not really sure, I like the direction of where it's going. I start to see a lot of these darker reds and the circle, the red and white circles that I had initially thought I liked just didn't work for me. So I'm trying other things to see if maybe it'll work. Eh, maybe not. Really liking the polka dots there. Sometimes you have to flip it around, get a new perspective to see if you'll like it better. And eventually, you sometimes just have to start over. And I began to cut or rip scraps to be of similar shape or size. You could arrange and rearrange until eventually you find just the right layout that makes you say, yes, that's what I was looking for. That's what I want. Overall, it takes me anywhere between 10 and 40 minutes to create a collage. I recommend that if you find yourself waffling over what do I want, what do I not want, Set a timer. Set a timer for 15 or 20 minutes and see what you have done at those 15 or 20 minutes and then walk away. Come back 15 minutes later and see if you like it or if you don't like it. Does something need to be moved over? Do you need to rearrange a little bit? So don't stress over it. Have fun. Play, arrange until you get exactly the right layout that you like. And once you have everything arranged the way that you like it, Turn on your iron and get it ready so that you can fuse the scraps to the fusible webbing. And the fusible webbing acts as a glue that will hold all of the fabric scraps in place. When you're ironing, you want to make sure that you press in place and then lift your iron and go to the next spot. Don't try to slide the iron, lift and press. It may look like I'm sliding when I'm doing this in super fast forward motion, but I am lift and press, lift and press until you've completely covered the entire quilt. Trim the edges of any fabric that overhangs the batting. And now we're going to make sure that the, every piece that has maybe some overlap, so a lot of times when you make a collage, you're not going to have each piece of fabric end at exactly the same space as the other piece of fabric. You might have a little bit of overlap. And one way to make sure that the overlap stays stuck down, especially when we start our quilting, is to apply a small strip of fusible webbing to the back of one of the overlapped fabrics. So I'm just going to cut 
basically a very thin piece of fusible webbing and iron it to the back side of one of the overlap fabrics. And once that piece of fusible webbing has cooled a little bit, I'll remove the release paper and fuse it in place. And I'm going to continue looking for any overlapped fabrics to ensure that they're stuck down. If you can lift them up and you can see a lot of the batting underneath, you may need to press down with your iron again, maybe with the tip of your iron to make sure that they are stuck in place just how they should be. You see you have another place where there's some overlap, apply a piece of fusible webbing, remove the release paper, and fuse it in place. Well, once all of the pieces are fused in place, all the overlaps are stuck down, your background is ready for quilting. So these are some other backgrounds I've created. This one uses very large pieces of fabric. I particularly fell in love with that chandelier fabric and wanted to make sure that a big piece of it was on my quilt. And then I like stripes and a little bit of um, squares across the middle. This blue quilt let me use a little bit of blue and green fabric. I found a print that had both blue and green and I thought it would be nice to add in a little bit more green at the bottom so I fused on a piece of green fabric over the blue polka dot. And this is my yellow quilt in which I cut with scissors small little pieces of yellow fabrics and created a patchwork. So these aren't pieced together, they're individually fused onto the background and it'll give it a sort of faux patchwork look across the top. And then I just use some larger pieces along the bottom of the quilt. So when you're making your background, have fun. Turn on some happy music and just start playing. When you love it, then it's done. <laughs>